When it comes to Catholic popes, Pope John Paul II is one of the most fondly remembered. He was a religious and spiritual leader, a head of state, the keeper of the faith, and a political pioneer. There are lots of ways to describe Pope John Paul II, who led the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican State from 1978 until he passed away in 2005. After that, he was canonized as a saint. Born in Poland as Karol Wojtyła, he grew up playing hockey, skiing, and loving the mountains. As Pope, he not only spread the gospel, he seized the world stage to bring down the Iron Curtain. Many historians credit him for pushing the first dominoes that eventually led to the fall of communism in Eastern Europe. Pope John Paul II, a staunch religious conservative, at odds with many people, many Catholics, over issues like abortion, gay rights, and women in the clergy. Yet he worked tirelessly to keep his flock together. And despite his conservatism, or maybe because of it, he related to many young people in the church. To them, he was a rock star. Looking at us and blessing us. They saw him as a larger than life symbol who preached faith, peace, and humility. Young people of America. Pope John Paul II is why it was such a big deal 30 years ago when Denver was chosen to host World Youth Day. Dear young people. An event he championed that was celebrated every two or three years in different parts of the world. More than 250,000 young Catholics and spiritual leaders from some 100 countries joined the Pope in Denver. They prayed with him at various events, venues, and religious services over five days in August of 1993, culminated by the celebration of Mass at Cherry Creek State Park, attended by a half million people. We bless you, God. The city was alive. The local and worldwide media covered the Pope here nearly nonstop. It was arguably the biggest spotlight ever put on Colorado. A huge event, and for the most part, a huge success. Pope John Paul II led a pilgrimage to the peaks that is still celebrated by many people three decades later. Hello everyone, I'm Gary Shapiro at Cherry Creek State Park, where 30 years ago, hundreds of thousands of people came to celebrate with their Pope. Sadly, it turned into another big news story when a lot of them got sick because of the heat and altitude. More on that in just a minute. But first, we want to take you back to a week like no other in Colorado, when Pope John Paul II came to town and brought a ton of people with him. Early in the summer of 1993, this was the video that dominated the news. A small child leaving the hospital after surviving a gunshot wound, a victim from the crossfire of gang violence. It was called the summer of violence, 74 homicides, 142 assaults, and it was with that background that the Denver Catholic Archdiocese, the city, and the state were planning for a huge event that would put Colorado in the world spotlight. World Youth Day, featuring a visit by Pope John Paul II. Before it even began, Denver Archbishop J. Francis Stafford talked about the violence. The Holy Father heard about that, that summer of murders in, and asked me personally what is going on. We got faxes and letters and phone calls from all over the world asking if it was safe to send their children to Denver because of the summer of violence that had been broken out. Those of us who were here in 93 remember how uh, difficult that summer was in terms of the amount of violence. And uh, so there was real concern for the Holy Father's safety. So with prayers said and fingers crossed, Pope John Paul II arrived in Colorado August 12, 1993. He had chosen Denver for the sixth World Youth Day over Minneapolis and Buffalo. 
The Pope wanted to bring the gospel to a modern secular city. Plus, he had grown up living in the mountains. He loved them and looked forward to visiting the Colorado high country. I organized our own proposal and the idea was not so much what do we have to provide the young people in view of the facilities and housing and food and so on and so forth, but why would young people want to come to Denver on a pilgrimage in a spirit of prayer and friendship? But I was resolved that wherever World Youth Day was going to be held in 93, we would go. <laughs> Little knowing, not the slightest hint that it would be held in Denver. I mean, I didn't even begin to imagine that in 1991. It really put Denver on the map because that was the only news on TV. The Pope's in Denver. And that dominated the national news as well as the local news. Young people came from all over the world. Some skeptics predicted maybe 20,000 would show up. I think it's really bizarre that these people go ape over a guy that just is a human being and wears a beanie. <laughs> I don't know. But when the Pope arrived in Denver, he was greeted by more than a half million visitors. There was tremendous joy. I don't think any of us realized how much work and organization was gonna be needed for the event. Colorado pulled it off with everyone, including residents, Catholics, non-Catholics, working together to find housing, food, transportation, and safety for all the pilgrims. Security was extremely tight around the Pope in the events with the U.S. Secret Service in charge. And amazingly, there weren't any problems. When World Youth Day opened, when the young people gathered, when the Pope came, all violence, all crime stopped. There were no major incidents, no major arrests, no, uh, it was the most peaceful time. So it really was a great example of what can happen when people gather together to care for one another, love for one another, to share with one another, and to share their lives, their culture, their well-being, their language, their upbringing with one another for the sake of good. By mid-August of that year, the video reminding us of the violence in Denver was replaced by this video in the hearts and minds of many Colorado residents. Pope John Paul II arrived at the old Stapleton Airport greeted by President Bill Clinton. Thousands of pilgrims watched on big screens at Civic Center Park. In a short ceremony, standing in the rain, the Pope talked about welcoming young people to such a young nation. Equal justice for all. Then he surprised everyone, including the President, by starting his visit on a controversial note. America, defend life. He cut right to the chase, challenging abortion rights supporters like President Clinton. And so it began, a week like no other in Colorado. Then they headed off together in Marine One for a meeting one-on-one. -on -one. As the only Catholic university in the region, Regis was the perfect backdrop for these two world leaders. I covered that meeting. The Pope and the President greeting the small crowd at Regis posing for pictures, Thank you. Thank you. talking for an hour about issues facing the world and about working together to solve them. They did not discuss abortion. They emerged looking like two old friends. They sounded like two new ones. Thank you, Your Holiness, Thank for you. your heart and your efforts. Thank you very much. Then it was off to the old Mile High Stadium configured for baseball for the brand new Colorado Rockies. But on this day, some 85,000 people did not come to cheer on their team, but to welcome the Pope, who made quite the entrance in the famous Pope Mobile. Backstage, the Pope was presented the symbolic key to the city by Mayor Wellington Webb and First Lady Wilma Webb. Your Holiness, I would like to present you this key on behalf of the people of the city and county of Denver and hope that it is also an instrument and a key to peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I greet you all together. In a jam-packed stadium, 
The faces of the faithful told the story. When he came around and, you know, it's like I could see him. I actually felt like crying, you know. I was just so happy. It was, it was really touching. Emotion, caring, kindness, and love. It was the first big event of World Youth Day, and it set the tone for the week. For the people who got to be close to the Pope that week, it was special, thrilling, emotional, unforgettable. There were many events to celebrate that week. Pilgrims gathered on the 16th Street Mall. There was a concert at Civic Center Park featuring country star Winona Judd. And the Pope held mass at the Mother Church, the Cathedral Basilica of Immaculate Conception on Colfax. When blessing the people, sometimes his hand touched their faces and his presence touched their souls. After several days on this whirlwind schedule, it was time for the Pope to take some time for the Pope. He spent his time in the mountains at St. Malo Retreat at the foot of Mount Meeker near Allens Park. 160 acres of peace and beauty owned by the archdiocese. Sadly, much of it is gone now after a fire and flood. But the cathedral on the rock, St. Catherine's, it's still there. It's where Pope John Paul II sought refuge from a frantic world. He hiked the trails that reminded him of his Polish homeland he reflected and prayed, relaxed and rested. And nearby on Highway 7, about 100 people gathered at a roadblock, and they were shocked when the Pope took time to walk up to them. Oh, he's coming this way. Oh, this is so neat. Completely unplanned. Yeah. Retired Nine News reporter Roger <laughs> really Wolf covered that unbelievable story. He started talking to people and uh, blessing people, kissing people, uh, chatting on and on. And uh, uh, so <laughs> for the people who were there, it, it was really like a dream come true, a prayer answered actually. And this morning when I said my prayers, I said, Dear Blessed Mother, you have to help us. Please let us see him. And she did. I don't have any words to explain how I feel. We called it the pilgrimage to the peaks. And in this case, it really was because he was up in the mountains, and you could tell that uh, he really enjoyed being there. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. It was a peaceful time during a crazy busy week, a perfect picture of the peaks, the Pope, and the people. Their pilgrimage and their goal, to renew their faith and make this world a better place. <laughs> yes, that was me 30 years ago with the pilgrims, then as now on the Cherry Creek bike path. Thousands of people walked this path to Cherry Creek State Park to see the Pope in his final mass. The problem was it was really hot. They hadn't drank much water and weren't used to the altitude. We found ourselves covering a much different story. And that's coming up after the break. They're here by the thousands. Officials anticipate an absolute zoo today. They're ready for music, bells, and a lot of kids. It was time for the pilgrims to walk. Hi, we'll be praying for you. Yes, for your hearts and for your feet both, okay? <laughs> to walk 13 miles from downtown Denver to Cherry Creek State Park. Have a good day. Where the Pope was to hold mass the next day. Give me shoes on my feet, let me walk to Cherry Creek, let me walk to Cherry Creek today. Yeah. It's so positive. I've been impressed all week. They're from everywhere and they're so friendly. Unfortunately, this wonderful event turned into something much different. It was a hot day, it was a long walk, and the pilgrims weren't drinking much water. They hate the water. This cold water is terrible, they're not drinking enough. Carbonated water, they hate it. Nothing we can do about it now. I got dizzy, my head is spinning and stuff. 
I'm still dizzy now. We also have a party down in seizures in 5-4. Copy that. The medical experts here say they've never seen anything like it. The ambulances just kept rolling into the medical command post one after another, and patient after patient came off on stretchers. As thousands of pilgrims got sick, former 9 News reporter Tom Costello covered the breaking story. Tom is now an NBC News correspondent. Uh, and they started dropping like flies. They were simply dehydrated, hadn't had enough to drink or eat, and they were getting sick, some were passing out, and before long, uh, suddenly they were coming in, just stretcher by stretcher, uh, into the triage area. Never been in the military, but this has got to be like a mesh unit at full tilt. Just so much heat got to me. Most of these kids just needed some Gatorade, some water, maybe an IV, D5W kind of thing, and they were okay. As the day turned to night, most of the sick kids had recovered and made it to Cherry Creek State Park, ready to turn in for the night. And when they woke up the next day, they were greeted by a beautiful sunrise. It's incredible to wake up with, with uh, 200,000 people in your, right beside you. <laughs> I remember some of the most memorable live reporting that morning was Mark Kobrick waking up with the kids and pulling their sleeping bags from, you know, over their heads and saying, Good morning, good morning. Hello, miss. Mark Kobrick with Channel 9 in Denver. You're live on the air right now. Would you, would you look up at my camera? Look right up, right up here. Soon a helicopter appeared overhead, signaling the Pope's arrival. Then Archbishop Stafford was flying with him. I would never forget that I saw those hundreds of thousands of young people through the eyes of the Pope and saw it through the hands that he was praying with the rosary. It was a very impressive moment. The gathering at Cherry Creek State Park was huge, more than a half million people. Many were overcome with emotion. Others, once again, were overcome by the heat. But all in all, it was an amazing sight. For the faithful, it was a spiritual connection with the Holy Father. For others, it was a chance to get to know a gentle man with a warm smile and a caring heart. Pope John Paul II left his mark on Colorado. And then he went on his way. It's Sunday at Queen of Peace Catholic Church in Aurora, and the priest is Father Felix, who's originally from Spain. 30 years ago, he was one of the hundreds of thousands of young people who came to Denver to see Pope John Paul II at World Youth Day. Until that trip, he was planning for a career teaching mathematics. But the Pope's message made an impression. Do not be afraid to go out and announce the gospel everywhere, in the streets, in the crossroads, uh, do not be afraid to abandon your comfortable life. There probably weren't a lot of visitors 30 years ago who became priests, but the Pope's message of truth and faith stuck with many. It spurred the Denver Archdiocese to raise millions of dollars to expand its headquarters onto the current Steel Street campus. It's named the St. John Paul II Center for the New Evangelization. And for Denver and Colorado, World Youth Day was the first of many big events to come. It was a lesson on how to do them right. I thought it was great for Denver. I thought it was, I frankly thought it was great for the Pope. And I thought the city shined that day. The international event which has more participants than even the Olympics. The Olympics might have 10 or 15,000 athletes. We had 225,000 registered participants in the event. Truly an international event. Pope John Paul II died in 2005, and the church made him a saint in 2014. His legacy has been pretty solid over the past three decades, except for one big thing. Since then, his reputation may have suffered a little bit in the, in the views of some because of the way he handled the pedophile priest scandal that rocked the Catholic Church. Denver Archbishop Samuel Aquila says the Pope shouldn't carry that blame. The priests that abused others should. 
in retrospect and when it, when, when, whenever you look at history, it, it's important to look at it and say, what did they know at that point in time? Looking back all those years, for me, what stands out are the great memories. When 9 News anchor Mike Landis and I got to go to Rome for a preview of World Youth Day, we got to meet the Pope and give him a crystal statue of the mountains. When he came to Denver, and we got to see him up close and personal, how emotional people became when he touched them physically or spiritually. And how this gentle man, whose words could cause both calm and conflict, stole the hearts of many Coloradans through his mere presence. For those of us who were around in 1993, it was something we'll never forget. And for those directly involved in it, it remains a time of wonder and a source of pride. The Denver Post called World Youth Day awe-inspiring. Cardinal Stafford remembers that headline three decades ago a little differently, but still fondly. August the 22nd, I picked up a, a Denver Post Sunday edition and the headlines, page one, above in the middle, World Youth Day 93, awesome, awesome. Now, the Denver Post and I were not very close friends up to that point. To many, it was awesome and awe-inspiring. The pilgrimage to the peaks seems like yesterday. We hope you've enjoyed our look back at World Youth Day 30 years ago. If you were around back then, you know it was a memorable event. And you know that Pope John Paul II left his mark on the church, on the world, and on Colorado with his pilgrimage to the peaks. Thanks for joining us.